What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at again with another video. So we're gonna check out what made Paul Heyman the greatest manager of all time. Now this should be very interesting. I had to check this out because we all know uh, Paul Heyman is getting inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame as he should. Uh, and we found out on this episode of Monday Night Raw, this past episode, that Roman Reigns will be inducting him into uh wwe hall of fame uh this year so he deserves to be there the guy's gonna go down as one of the greatest managers of all time and his wrestling mindset is just leagues and bounds above everybody else and he knows how to sell a match he, he knows how to get people excited for a match he he can sell you on anybody <laughs> like the dude is just fantastic at what he does and he's one of the best promos ever ever in wrestling so he definitely deserves to be in the wwe hall of fame so i had to check this video out because he's gonna be there uh be uh inducted this weekend so this should be a great one appreciate all love and support we're gonna get right into this video let's check this out one show Paul Heyman was the mad scientist behind ECW, the evil genius of SmackDown's golden era, and yep. someone who has evolved and remained a force in wrestling for decades. He's been a manager to many of the greats as well as the advocate and special counsel to two of the very best. For yep. this video, we want to encapsulate his career and highlight what made Paul Heyman one of wrestling's greatest minds. Let's first look at Heyman's early career, including his original run as a heel manager as Paul E. Dangerously. Yep. As a young, pushy photographer, Paul learned from legendary managers like Captain Lou Albano, classy Freddie Blassie, and the Grand Wizard. So it's no surprise how well Paulie adapted. Even in his early days, he seemed like a natural. He's gonna rip your stinking head off and spit right. Bro, it's so cool seeing him with some of the future greats like Stone Cold and The Undertaker. Like he was always surrounded by greatness. That's the crazy thing about this. He was always surrounded by greatness. Right from the start, Heyman was hustling and lying by blagging his way backstage and sneaking into production meetings where he learned from legends like Dusty Rhodes. Paulie Dangerously was an arrogant Wall Street yuppie with a brick-sized cell phone. Uh -huh. I control everything I need to control hey! when my big money people call Paulie Dangerously. That was not only used for constant business dealings, but also came in handy as a weapon. <laughs> he was obnoxious, overbearing, and difficult to work with. Basically, his on-screen persona was almost identical to his real-life self. So and this is what we've all like we, we we continue to say when people in wrestling are more or less themselves but they exaggerate it a little bit more on camera it works because it comes off believable you believe that paul Heyman is a scumbag on television because he's probably a little bit of a scumbag in real life it works that's that's a testament to just how good his character has always been in just wrestling, period. Thing that remained the same for Heyman's entire career. He was seen by many of his peers as a cockroach of the wrestling business. There we someone go. Someone people wanted to dislike, but just had to put up with. But as we'll see, Paul was really a social butterfly with endearing qualities. Heyman was the mastermind behind extreme championship wrestling. He redefined the industry by making a product for the fans. It was some of the most violent, technically proficient, and amazing high-flying action we'd ever seen. Mm -hmm. All wrapped up into one epic show, which had the most loyal, crazy, and passionate fans that would chant the company's initials in support. Yeah. Wrestling was stuck in the 1980s and I thought it all needs to change Paul accentuated the strengths and hid the weaknesses of what was a I will say this <laughs> without ECW you don't have I think like you don't have parts of the attitude era like the aggressiveness the in-ring style and just the uh, ecw kind of changed all of that it was it was something different you know some people may not like it but i mean the attitude era copied you know some of the stuff that ecw was doing it did it added that edge to wrestling hell to be honest with you, ECW definitely probably grandfathered a lot of of what we see in wrestling today, especially in AEW and on the independent scene. Like, it did. That's how I view it. Like, 
uh, obviously wrestling in WWE was so different in like the 80s and early 90s. The product had got stale. Then they started getting a little edgier. And I do think ECW had played a part in some of that edginess. Them seeing what was going on over there and catering to that that young demographic growing up because they wanted to see something edgier they wanted to see something a little bit more violent they didn't want to see the family friendly stuff that they had been seeing from the late 80s and early 90s it worked but you had to kind of change with the times available to him this was especially true when it came to his roster Heyman had an eye for talent where he could spot a superstar before anyone else steve austin was proof of this paul yeah. requested to work with him in wcw however management didn't see what paul saw but yeah. now in ecw Heyman was able to give steve the platform he deserved uh -huh. and could take full advantage of i've been crapped on for four years i believe i deserve a break I didn't get to climb a ladder to the top in WCW like this. Heyman empowered mm -hmm. all his wrestlers, allowing them to shed their blood, sweat and tears on a literal canvas. Heyman encouraged and motivated the wrestlers to where they'd run through walls for him and the ECW fans. Even if he lied and didn't pay everyone on time or yeah. at all. Because you have all made it to the dance. Because believe me, this is the dance. And I have never believed in a locker room like I believe in the locker room of ECW. We have the hardest working performers. Come on, come on. Yo, come hat. On. Come on. Yo, hat. Yo, hat. Yo, Yo hat. Come on, move that f arm. Yo, hat. Come on. Yo, hat. Come on. Towards the end of their existence, <laughs> ECW struggled to balance finances mm -hmm. after being screwed over by pay per view providers and TV station TNN. God knows the network has never put out one freaking commercial or one press release to let you know that we're here. We hate this stinking network. Mm -hmm. Hey, network, I dare you to throw me off the air. ECW came to an end, but the fans and wrestlers never forgot how much it meant to them. I'm yeah. not crying. My eyes are red because I was in the back smoking a joint with Van Damme. <laughs> they will always have a special place in their heart for Heyman for making it all possible. Thank yeah. you! Thank you! Thank you! Thank you! Thank you! He gave so much. People shit on him. I shit on him. My family lost money. His parents lost money. People who say, oh, he bounced a check on me. He's a scumbag. He's a liar. Mm -hmm. At times he was. And, and when you say this is a panel of, of a Mount Rushmore, yes. But you know what? If there's one Mount Rushmore, it should be Paul and a bunch of us standing behind him. After EZW closed his doors, Heyman enjoyed a memorable stint on commentary in WWF yep. with Jim Ross. Maybe you could like put your arm around me so people think we're together or something. Are you flirting with me? And that's, and once again, like I said, he, some people may not want to admit it, but ECW is kind of what birthed the Attitude Era in a sense, or kind of, not. I wouldn't say birthed it, but it, it, they saw what was happening in ECW and they definitely emulated some of that stuff and brought it to WWE and it made them even more money and they ended up bringing over Paul Heyman himself. So he's definitely, a, ECW was a big influence on the wrestling industry as a whole. More personality than you, <laughs> more charisma than you, that the mob put more chemistry with Perry than you. I mean, can you honestly believe that you ever had a chance against a mob? Get lost! <laughs> Take a hike! I came to Washington, D.C., and I'm gonna get to see Bush! Austin's gonna give him an ass! It's right here! He knocked it! Turn it angle! Turn it angle! Turn it angle! Get up! Get down! Get away with it! I got away with it! <laughs> 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 He had a great chemistry with JR and cut some fantastic so good. on TV. <laughs> you drove everybody out of business. Classic. This segment right here, classic. Fantastic segment, bro. Vince let him just go out there and said, make him money. And boy, did he make him some money. Just, that's how good he is, bro. Gotta, gotta, gotta give him respect. Didn't you, Vince? You ran all the competition to the ground and you stole all their ideas and you made yourself a billionaire out of it. I have been sitting like a damn corporate sellout next to that damn pig! 
Heyman got the audience to decide him enough to where he could eventually return in a significant heel role down the line. Mm -hmm. After ECW, Heyman's greatest work as a booker came during his stint as the head writer for SmackDown in 2002 and 2003. And this he is was considered cooking. the show's greatest period, as Paul expertly utilized the strong talent he had available to him. Yeah. The brand split had just occurred, so it was important for SmackDown to stand out and be different from Raw. And given how unique and innovative Heyman's ECW was, there was no better man to lead the blue brand. Mm -hmm. Yes, things were still overseen by Vince McMahon, but Paul had a lot of free reign. While Raw featured numerous long-talking segments, SmackDown prided itself on being yep. the wrestling show. Yes, there were still some suspect angles, but mm -hmm. these were handled by Vince and Stephanie. Of Plus, course. much of the show's runtime was taken up by in-ring action. Heyman built his show around a core of wrestlers known as the SmackDown 6. This was a tag team program that allowed six singles wrestlers to feature in main events, producing in-ring clinics on a weekly basis. Mysterio's back out here, and he's looking to make a big impact! Bro, this, some would say this is peak SmackDown era, bro. Peak SmackDown, like, entertainment right here, bro. They were cooking. Cooking back in the day, man. Classic. The show Classic. was constantly better than Raw, which the mm -hmm. TV ratings eventually began to reflect, as did the house show and merch numbers when it came mm -hmm. to the SmackDown talent. Countless wrestlers benefited greatly from Heyman's creative, including yeah. Edge, who Paul saw as SmackDown's version of Sting. Then there was Rey Mysterio, the antithesis of the wrestler WWE usually went for. Left to their own devices, the company would have likely missed the boat with Rey, but Heyman was able mm -hmm. to show the higher-ups how amazing Mysterio was. This was aided by how much the commentators put Rey over. This yeah. was directly instructed by Paul as after my Michael Cole and Taz had called the show live, Heyman would bring them into the studio the next day to redub certain lines. Paul was able to do this because the show was taped, so Heyman could add stuff in during post-production that would have otherwise got flagged by Vince while he was in the announcer's ears mm. during the show. This meant through the announce team, Paul could effectively tell the stories he wanted without others intervening. Cole and Taz's commentary is remembered fondly during this period, yep. and both greatly credit Heyman for making them better announcers. The competition is better on SmackDown. We also got the best Team Unfortunately though, behind the scenes, Paul had to fight a lot of battles. Battles he began to lose more and more. Heyman fought the top brass on everything, which annoyed the likes of Stephanie McMahon a great deal. If you can't trust someone, can't be in business with them. Paul was ultimately removed from his position, and while SmackDown remained a decent show, it never recaptured the magic Heyman had. There's something mm -hmm. special about letting the artist be the artist while a brilliant teacher like Paul guides them in the right direction. It's what made ECW special, and it's why the fans look back at Heyman's time in charge of SmackDown so fondly. Chris, take another bite, that's all. Paul returned in 2002 as the agent for the company's mm -hmm. hottest up-and-coming prospect, Brock Lesnar. Here, Heyman was able to transfer the heat he'd built up during the invasion to his new client, while at the same time acting as the mouthpiece and behind-the-scenes mentor to Lesnar. Which worked. It worked. It got him over. It got him over. Obviously, he wasn't really that good on the microphone at this time, so Paul Heyman was the perfect mouthpiece to sell him to everybody else. It worked. That's just what it was, man. That, you know, it worked at that time. Obviously, things have changed tremendously now. Uh, but yeah, you know, things happen. <laughs> and ladies and gentlemen, the next big thing is Brock Lesnar. Just like with ECW, for Brock, it was all about showcasing his strengths and hiding his weaknesses. Yep. With Paul's help, Lesnar enjoyed one of the greatest rookie years of any wrestler ever. Brock had gotten over strong enough to where he was able to turn babyface and now feud with Heyman's new clients. All this was happening while Paul was also a head writer of SmackDown. Mm -hmm. Paul Heyman! Oh my god. Towards the end of his WWE run, Lesnar realigned with Heyman for a short time. You're the greatest WWE champion of all time! This is your hometown! But the two's most successful run together was still to come. <laughs> After Brock made his return in 2012, mm -hmm. the higher-ups tried to make him cut promos. I'm not the same little naive farm boy. The world got to witness firsthand Brock. Yeah, his his promo ability still wasn't good. It didn't get much better until we got Cowboy Brock. 
didn't get much better until then. But yeah, it's it, it was still like, ugh, get this guy off the mic. <laughs> Lesnar bringing the pain. Look at However, that. Lesnar simply told him to hire Paul instead. Paul, say something stupid. Heyman returned and every time he spoke, he told us who he is and what his role was. It was a simple but key ingredient of such a great character. Mm -hmm. It's an introduction for new fans and something regular viewers can repeat. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paul Heyman. My name is Paul it works. are you that I make fun of you and then what do you do you say my name along with me <laughs> my name is Paul Heyman my name is Paul Heyman my name is he's been Paul doing it for years Heyman. and I am the advocate for the reigning As the advocate for Brock, Heyman cut the best promos of his career. Lesnar was the prize fighter while Paul acted as the Don King style hype man promoter. Mm -hmm. He who dies with the most street cred still dies. I got two words for you. Brock Lesnar. However, he spoke with such eloquence and conviction, you almost believe every word he said, which yeah. says a lot about how good Heyman was given how much he lied throughout his career. I hope you win! I mean, just an advocate! A Brock Lesnar advocate! And you told me to say everything! It was all Brock's idea! I always found it so much easier in life to lie. People accept lies so much easier. I have such an aversion to the truth because the truth is a lot harder pill to swallow but then again he lied with so much charisma and persuasion yeah. that even if he screwed people over they still loved him as much as he lied he also spoke many home truths and absolutes no matter what Heyman never missed on the mic for the yeah. most non pgs kicker of the pg era well last night the undertaker was a loser my client Brock Lesnar he be selling it. the street! Knock, knock! Who's there? Mike! Mike! Lion Brock Lesnar conquered the Undertaker's undefeated streak and wrestled Bro, he was cooking with that for a while, bro. I'm talking about every time he came out there, he made you remember that Brock beat the streak, which I still, to this day, and I will always say this, bro, that should have never happened. The Undertaker should not have lost his streak to Brock because Brock didn't need it, but, you know. Mania, and I'm the one behind the one in 21 and one. Eat, sleep, suplex, Repeat. Did Triple H dispute me? No. Cena? Oh, yeah, I know I left out Andre because he's dead, stupid. <laughs> oh, my God. You don't need to sell your soul to the devil. The devil sold his soul to me a long time ago. You can sell your soul to the devil, but your ass belongs to Barack Lesnar. He be My selling that eyes shit. have seen the glory of the conqueror, my lord. Hey, kids, there is no Santa Claus. The Easter Bunny is a fable. That yellow stream running down your leg was not pineapple juice. <laughs> Paul's second run with Brock can be epitomized with the catchphrase, that's not a prediction, it's a spoiler. Heyman regularly said this in the run-up to Lesnar's matches. It turned out to be more than just an iconic line since the majority of times it was said, Brock in fact came away with the win. Now mm -hmm. that's not a prediction, that's a spoiler. Brock Lesnar is going to get rid of Kofi Kingston. Ladies and gentlemen, this is not a prediction. It's a spoiler. Yeah, yeah it, it definitely was a spoiler, bro. Yep, you know, he got rid of him fucking quick. <laughs> 
I told you it wasn't a prediction, it's a spoiler, which means it was the truth. I haven't violated a spoiler since before WrestleMania 30. As the advocate for Lesnar, we got to see Paul interact with a lot of other characters, mm -hmm. which made for great TV. But I do have something for Stephanie. You know, I say, You want to see your husband fight Brock Lesnar? You got it! It's on! You and Brock at SummerSlam! Oh! 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 Bro, they were some menaces back then, bro. I'm telling you, Brock and, and Paul Heyman were just the worst. The best and the worst at the same time, man. We're about to be threatened by The Undertaker's baby brother to pay my client Brock Lesnar's most reasonable fine. One, that your son will call Brock Lesnar daddy. You'll never see Brock Lesnar in a title match again. Mark my words, never. RKO on the beast. What? That shit was sick. That shit was so cool. <laughs> CM Punk was one of the wrestlers who benefited most from mm -hmm. Heyman's guidance. Without having Paul in his corner at OVW, Punk wouldn't have made it to the main shows, yeah. never mind the company as a whole. It speaks to how much Heyman thought of Punk, mm -hmm. that during the December to Dismember debacle in 2006, Paul put his job on the line to champion what he believed in, which included pushing Punk to have a featured role on the pay-per-view. Paul Heyman saw something in me. That's right, I'm a Paul Heyman guy. Paul Heyman refused to fire CM Punk. So given the connection, it made sense to pair Heyman and Punk together after Paul returned in 2012. Yeah. Interestingly, Heyman managed Punk and Brock together, but each of their presentations were drastically different. Paul played more of a background role for Punk. However, Heyman's mm -hmm. presence was still felt. From his facial expressions... See him, Punk. Because CM Punk was already good on a microphone, so he didn't really have to do too much, but his presence was still felt. Once again, gotta give it to credit to Paul. He knows talent. Every person that he's aligned himself with, you they end up becoming fucking megastars. He knows talent. Gotta give him credit for that. Every night he goes. And we got the walrus, Paul Heyman out here to keep reminding him of it constantly. To the way he held the WWE title. It's clobbering time. I am the best in the world. Paul remained the absolute pro we knew him to be. While with Punk, we also got to see Heyman interfere in matches and get physical. Officials are still down! Punk, yes, dude, Heyman! Oh, Heyman! <laughs> Heyman ran interference and CM Punk! Paul ended up turning on Punk in a feud that started off very well. Overall, it will be remembered for how entertaining Heyman was throughout it all. Mm -hmm. Even when things took a turn creatively, Paul remained the highlight. This was... This is tough. Oh my god! Please. Stay out of my personal life! CM Punk, this is good. I still love you. And for the first time in your life, Paul Heyman, you tell the truth! Show me a hero, and I'll show you a coward that ran out of options. And now you're gonna feel my wrath! Do you understand me? This is so good. This was this was good. This is this was such a good match, bro. That CM Punk fucking versus uh Brock Lesnar SummerSlam match. That was dead. Oh, such a good match. Such a good feud, bro. Woo! <laughs> Because I am the voice of the voice of the voiceless. <laughs> this is my pipe bomb about CM Punk. 
Punk. In 2005, WWE had no vision for you. And what did I do? I martyred my entire career for you. By 2020, Heyman had built himself a first ballot Hall of mm -hmm. Fame career, but little did we know he was about to embark on one of his greatest runs to date. As Facts. a special counsel to Roman Reigns, Heyman played the loyal wise man. He played a key role in getting the previously polarizing Reigns over as a tribal heel. It's not just a prediction, that's a spoiler. This Hold on, hold on. To Roman Reigns, hold Heyman on. played the loyal wise man. He played a key role in getting the previously polarizing Reigns over as a tribal heel. I just want y'all to see this moment right here. This That's a spoiler. This that moment right there changed everything for WWE. When the pan, when the camera pans over and you see Paul Heyman next to Roman Reigns, I was like, yep. It, it's different now. WWE is about to be completely different. And it worked. Ah, oh, it worked. It worked. Did this alliance with Reigns and Heyman. Just when you thought I was out, he pulled me back in. Pointing your accusatory fingers at me for corrupting him. It's him corrupting me. Paul was also it's a so critical part in crafting the critically acclaimed Bloodline story. Heyman and the group sought to put together a body of work that would be compared to The Sopranos, Breaking Bad, and The Wire. Facts. A compelling, thrilling drama with cinematic storytelling and riveting villains. Roman Reigns! Roman Reigns! So good. So good! And with Heyman at the helm, there was no better man to act as the group's slimy businessman on screen. Ding! This shit was so fucking entertaining when Daniel Bryan was banished from WWE. Uh, he, you know, after they had that great match, Daniel Bryan versus Roman Reigns for the title. And then they did the 10 ring, uh, 10 bell toe salute because it was over. Daniel Bryan was done. He was no longer in WWE and they did the 10 bell salute. And I don't think, I think, the report is Roman didn't know this was going to happen. He didn't know Paul Heyman was going to do this. So he's actually cracking up here. He's breaking character because that shit's actually fucking funny, bro. Oh, my God. This is so good. <laughs> Plus, he had history with the Anawais and was a respected real-life friend of the family. Mm -hmm. Paul Heyman. And you go way back with my family. That's why I got love for you. Was... Paul's story arc was enhanced greatly <laughs> during this period. From washing his hands of Brock. <laughs> Whoa! Wide television. Every Friday night. If Brock Lesnar fears you, I I'm under the impression he wouldn't dare show up at Extreme Rules. No, not that Brock Lesnar is Roman Reigns. I mean, you beat Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania. This is when Brock Lesnar usually takes six to nine months off and leaves everybody else hanging, which is a life that you rescued me from, my tribal chief, which is why I love you. <laughs> Are you right? Are you kidding me? And Roman Reigns in the Superman fight. <laughs> of all Roman's idea to begin with, it was never my idea, but I love you. Oh my Woo! To the unquestioned loyalty he showed towards Roman. My tribal chief. My tribal chief. <laughs> I am the wise man. Who's the main event around here? Someone said they made this a funny comment, bro. I, If my girl ain't acting like Paul Heyman does around Roman Reigns, I don't want her. Facts. Facts. If she's not acting like the ultimate glazer for me, I don't want her. This nigga worships this nigga, bro. <laughs> Wise man, is my tribal chief? Who is the tribal chief? You are yeah, my tribal chief. You are. I gotta open my own doors now. No, no, no. My, uh, my, my apologies, my tribal chief. <laughs> Wise man, yes, my tribal chief. Is it not WrestleMania season? It is WrestleMania season, my tribal chief. When it comes to Sami Zayn, it's better to have him in the castle. Pissing out, then out of the castle, pissing in. Heyman worshipped the tribal chief and treated him as a godlike figure. Yeah. I acknowledge you, my tribal chief! We all acknowledge you, my tribal chief! The head of the table! The tribal chief! In God mode himself! 
<laughs> it's a family celebration. Wise man. You are family. I love you. <laughs> I love you, wise man. I love you too, my trouble too. And I thank you for your honesty. Let's be honest, the way you look at Roman Reigns, a little weird. <laughs> Paul demonstrated his loyalty in many ways, not just from the way he spoke and offered wisdom to Reigns, but through the little things Heyman did, from the way he held the title, to his expert pass of the microphone, mm -hmm. energy is palpable. Oh, what a pass! or when he called what Roman on the phone. <coughs> Call Roman Reigns. And this is true. Call Roman Reigns. To his brilliant facial expressions in the background of promos or during matches. I am gonna be the one to take him down! A remorseless. <laughs> Look at him! That's when he got packed up by, uh, but my bad, by fucking Brock Lesnar through the table at SummerSlam. He was dying. <laughs> Tell Charlie to fire up. Oh! Wait just a minute! <laughs> That's so fast! Despite not being the main focus of the scene, Heyman was always reacting. Yep. Edge there! Spare! Cover it! Cover the match! Do it, Edge! Miracles! Hold on, I can't hit it! Sammy's gonna do it! Look at his face! <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait to see his face. This oh, this Sunday gonna be good. I can't wait to see his face when he finally lose. Oh my God, it's gonna be good. It's gonna be good. It's gonna be good. This is oh! It was this level of acting that helped make the Bloodline story so iconic, mm -hmm. which further cemented Heyman as one of the industry's greatest characters. How'd WrestleMania do without Roman Reigns last year? To, 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 to my knowledge, it was the lowest attended WrestleMania of all time. <laughs> ECW is dead. And I wish the same for Sammy Zayn. In my last conversation with your dad, this he good. told me you were his favorite son. But Roman Reigns was the son so he always good. wanted. My tribal chief, do you want your sons sitting at his table? No one has ever beaten this Roman Reigns. Excuse me. Oh God! <laughs> Acknowledge him. He's been called a liar, a hustler, a genius, and a wise man. Paul Heyman is and has been all those things. Mm -hmm. It's what makes his story so special. He excelled wearing plenty of different hats across his time in the business, and his success allowed him to reach the top of the industry. When it's all said and done, Paul Heyman will be remembered as one of wrestling's most important figures. Now, if you enjoyed this video, be sure this to check a out one, a similar video. This was definitely a good one. Paul Heyman's the GOAT, bro. He's been around. Fantastic talent that he obviously saw something and wanted to work with these individuals and his knowledge and expertise enhanced their character and their overall appearance as a whole man he's a goat and uh he definitely deserves to be in the hall of fame uh this year so comment down below let me know your favorite paul Heyman promo segment whatever it is relating to him uh, he's had a lot of great promo segments a lot of funny uh interesting moments let me know your favorite moment from paul Heyman. but i appreciate all love support road to 150k and i'm seeing speedy youtube rest of the world appreciate y'all kicking in me see y'all next one peace